In this video, I'm going to show you how to gain an extra official bedroom on your property. Hi there, DIY loft conversion. Um, I've done it, I'm a graphic designer, not a joiner, I'm not a builder, uh, but I've managed to do it. Uh, you can do it as well, um, no problem. If you can pick up a drill, you can use a hammer, no problem. Um, first things first, make sure you've got enough room up there. If you've got 2.8 meters head height, that's a good start. Then get some drawings done by an architect. They'll show you all the materials you'll need to use, the size of the materials, um, where to put them as well. Um, once you've got these drawings done, um, submit them to the council. Uh, they'll then check, come out and check your plans, check the building, uh, and then once they've approved them, you can then proceed with the work. I did most of the work myself. Um, so uh, it cost me £8,000 to complete the loft conversion um, as opposed to £24,000 which was uh, one of the highest quotes I had. Um, doing it myself uh, enabled me to save money and do it um, exactly how I want it um, with uh, no problems. Um, what I will say is for the staircase um, I'll just point this out at the beginning, stairbox.com, um, they're really reasonably priced and um, very simple to use and, well, it worked for me, the stairs don't creak um, and uh, yeah, brilliant, so stairbox.com. Um, and I'll jump to the end um, because at the end, when you've completed all the work, which I'm going to show you in my video, um, step by step, um, you'll see photographs of the work progressing and um, I'll point out exactly what I did throughout the loft conversion. Um, this is given to you at the end, which is a certificate showing that you have now completed the work and it's basically been signed off by the council and it's an official bedroom. Um, the electrics have been tested and uh, that's something you'll have to do and that's something the council needs to see. Um, once they've been tested and checked, uh, that's all good. Um, so yeah, um, just watch the video and um, I hope that it inspires you to save money and uh, do your own love conversion. Um, so we have, we did have a two bedroom house, we now got a three bedroom house and when this um, property comes to put on the market it will be put on as a three bedroom house. Uh, so yes, recommend it to you all. Um, be confident. Watch the video. Okay, uh, first things first, um, clear out your loft. There's a lot of rubbish up there, lots of dust. Well, there was in mine, yours might be tidy. Um, but clear it out, take all the old insulation out, um, all the rubbish, um, tidy it up as much as you can, um, and make a, a good workspace. Um, you get some plastic bags and sacks up there and uh, put all your rubbish into the sacks and sellotape the top shut um, this way you can take it down through the house and um, dispose of it um, as you wish okay next um, get your um, supporting timbers Fasten them to the exterior wall using roll bolts. You basically drill through the wood, drill through the brick, put the roll bolt through and tighten the nut on. And that holds that, holds that wood there securely. Um, uh, and then from there, um, you can span your uh, flooring joists, which are the heavy duty joists that you and your architect has, has agreed with um, and span them from one side of the wall to the other. This will form your um, floor. Um, not forgetting to leave the opening for your staircase. As you can see from the picture, our staircase runs straight down the middle because it's going in between two supporting walls as it's a terraced house. We felt that this was probably the best way for it, causing less work to the um, lower um, rooms, the rooms below. Um, less disruption. Um, so simply fix your um, staircase into that space, bolting to each wall and, and fastening to the joists. Um, also these um, joist hangers are on the end of um, 
each joist hold them securely uh, and will prevent any movement of any kind. Um, so yeah, uh, next step is that. Next I put the centre parts into the joists. Um, these pull the joists together and make the floor feel super solid and prevent any bowing of, of the joists. Not that they'd bow anyway because of the correct thickness. Um, and um, yeah, so get them in place and uh, you've got your floor coming along nicely. Next, add insulation in between the joists. Um, this is uh, two, two, 250 mil insulation, um, and that's just placed in between the joists all nice and snug. Uh, it'll keep the loft cool, um, and as well, this is fire resistant as well, so that also helps with fire protection. Um, but obviously, heat rises, so any heat from the room below, this will prevent um, it coming straight up into the loft and making the loft just too warm. Um, so, yeah, that's... Next, uh, cut your floorboards to size. These are chipboards, um, also waterproof, uh, water resistant. Um, the tongue and groove, so they slot together. Um, use screws when you're doing this because nails will... Um, it makes the floor squeak and creak uh, when you're walking it. So screws are the best thing to hold these down. And just uh, put them into position, position and cut them all to size. Um, yeah, brilliant. Here I've placed um, two newel posts, end newel posts, for the uh, banister and I've just fastened them into um, the floor joists. You can see a couple of screws sticking out there. That's um, just due to um, my screwdriver failing me, uh, but it still holds held secure. There's, there's more, than, more than two screws in there, so yeah, fasten them in nice and securely um, and they'll um, provide a starting point for your banister. There's four of them, so that on each corner, there's four. Here you can see um, Celotex insulation board. Um, this is a, the 55 mil. It's slotted in between the rafters. Um, I've got breathable felt. Uh, you'll have to check that out when you look at the felt above your um, roof tiles. Uh, you either get um, solid felt or breathable felt, and I've got the breathable stuff. So all I've done is left um, a 12 mil gap between the Celotex insulation and the felt, and this allows air to go up. Um, each side of the roof and uh, the air will circulate and prevent any damp spots and any moisture. Um, these were just fastened in by actually little, little screws. Obviously if, you, if you're putting them in between the rafters they're going to fall out so I've just tacked them in uh, with some little screws uh, just so they don't fall out for now uh, and then your plasterboard will go on top of them to hold them insecure. I decided to have some storage space at one side of my loft. So uh, here you can see um, the framework, stud work for the starts of some cupboards and, and storage space. Um, just fasten that to the rafters, to the floor, secure it nicely, make sure it's level and straight. Uh, and that will um, become the cupboards. And uh, you can see that I've placed the cupboard doors in and, and and then the next thing to do on here would be just to fasten the plasterboard onto that stud work. Um. Here you can see the Celotex insulation board. This is used for the two exterior walls uh, of the apex and the actual um, rafters, the actual roof, the rafters, that fastens on there. Um, it's dot and dabbed 
onto the walls and it's screwed into the rafters. Um, this, this and the Celotex uh, board in between the rafters provides adequate insulation for the loft. The, see here that the insulation board I've cut to shape and screwed into the rafters using um, I think it were 100 mil screws actually um, straight through into the rafters and um, it's not too heavy this board so it's quite easy to hold up and, and screw in um, and that that's basically the start of your insulation um, obviously cut all your pieces to size I was cutting them downstairs and bringing them up um, just because uh, it was getting a bit crowded in the loft with all the uh, insulation board. Um, so yeah, you can see more insulation board cut to size for that uh, apex, that triangle shape there. Uh, that'll be dot and dabbed onto that wall, ready for the plasterer. Um, also in this image, you can see my Velux window, uh, which I got a roof person to fit. I didn't do that myself. I got uh, a roofer to fit that just so it's done properly and there's no leaks. And uh, it's quite, I'd say, get quite a large Velux window. You can always have a dormer, but that means more planning uh, permission for that dormer. With a Velux, you don't need planning permission because it's not going into anyone else's space. Um, so yeah, fitted that in there and uh, plasterboard around it. So yeah, on, on these images you can see the um, finish um, from the plasterer um, who did a brilliant job, obviously in a loft space. Um, it's quite awkward because there's a lot of funny angles, uh, but yeah, he did a really good job. And uh, once you get to this stage, you can start seeing how your loft's going to um, end up looking. And uh, yeah, it's a really exciting stage. Um, so yeah, that's... Uh, the plastering. So coming to the final stages now, decorating has painted, painted um, the walls um, with with raw plaster. We watered down the paint 50 50 50 paint emulsion and 50 water, and and just give it a, a white wash that just um, soaks into the plaster. If you put emulsion straight onto raw plaster it kind of peels off because um, it sucks all the water out of the paint and you're left with like a crust. So always water your paint down before you paint the raw plaster. And uh, yeah, so decorating. Um, and then you can see in these images um, the um, the railings, the uh, banister and the uh, railings that I fitted um, quite easy to fit, quite time consuming because uh, you have to cut each piece of, each notch, each piece of wood in there and put them in um, all correctly spaced. Uh, they have to be less than 100 mil. Um, it's a safety issue and uh, they, yeah, less than 100 mil. So just um, so no one can squeeze through there. I stuck my um, skirting board on, um, MDF skirting board is really easy to cut and uh, glued that on with grab, grab adhesive and did it in no time, it looks really nice and clean. Um, so yeah, that, that bit straightforward and um, all the arc drive as well, glued that on with grab adhesive and uh, just stuck it straight to the walls uh, where needed, so yep. Yeah. This image just shows the fire alarm um, in the loft conversion. Um, these are uh, these have to be on every floor, and they're all interlinked. So, say if there's a fire on the first floor, um, the smoke alarm on the top floor will go off. Um, these are all done uh, by your electrician. So yeah, um, finished loft conversion. Just wallpapered. Um, put furniture up there, you can see my son in the bed underneath the Velux, um, letting some gorgeous light through. Uh, really bright room actually because it's south facing so you get the sun through the Velux all, all day. Uh, love, love the room, favourite room in the house. Um, I think I've done a really good job.
Um, hope you've liked the video. Sorry it's been really brief. Um, some of the points um, I haven't gone into great detail because I'd I did the video uh, a while after I did the loft conversion, if you know what I mean. So yeah, it's um, it's been it's been a while since um, I did it. So yeah, sorry if it is a bit brief, um, but I've outlined I've outlined the most um, important parts. So I hope it helps you anyway. And thank you for watching.